This is part two of our How to Use Cura series. In this video, we are going to learn how to set up our first 3D print. For the first file that I'm going to add to my printer is going to be my Benchy. And so in the test folder, a 3D Benchy. And so it's just a good test file. It tests a lot of really good things. I'm going to go ahead and change the infill to, let's say, 50% and keep it on triangles. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. We can talk about the different ones in just a second. I want supports off completely. No supports generated. And for build place adhesion, I want to select skirt. And we'll talk, I plan to talk about all of these things in a second. So if I'm going too fast, do not worry. I'm going to go ahead and hit slice. And all slicing does is it breaks it into multiple levels. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second as well. As so you can see, it's going to take my printer an hour and 18 minutes to print this. If I hit preview, you can see what it's going to look like. But you can see it actually sliced it into 240 layers. What do I mean? I mean, this is how it prints. If you look, this is the first layer. This is what the first layer will look like. Hey guys, this is Editing Anderson from the future, and I need to interject. I realized that during my recording, I did not have the full Cura screen in view. So throughout the rest of this lesson, you will see me playing with the layers of our print. And what I'm doing is I'm using this slide bar. You can see as I go down to my first layer, I'm at layer one right now on my slide bar. If I slide up right now to the 77th layer, you can see that I'm at the 77th layer of the print, and it goes all the way up to 240 layers. And so I just wanted to make sure you knew what I was playing with throughout the video as I am going up and down these layers. If I drag it up, here's what the second, third, fourth, fifth, and all the other layers will look like. And so it'll print it layer by layer. That's what it means by slice. It's slicing it into these layers. Now you can see how it's mostly filled in. That's because I select 50% infill. I could put 100% infill. Now you'll notice whenever I changed a setting, it automatically made it where there was no preview. That's because I haven't sliced it with the new settings. If I slice it now, you'll notice it takes way longer. But also if I go to preview, you'll see that there's none of those triangles on the inside. The reason why it's going to take so long is it's going to fill it in 100% full. This was a big misconception for my uh, students, is they thought they wanted to shell things out to 3D print. This software will actually shell it out for you. And so I'm going to go ahead and change this to 10% infill. Because this thing doesn't need to be that strong. It's just a small little boat. doesn't matter. And so now you can see it'll print only an hour. It's about half the time. And if you look at the inside, you can see it's almost hollow or completely empty on the inside. Right? Everywhere where it would fill in a gap, it's completely empty. Again, if I change this to 30% infill, it makes it a little bit longer. It uses a little bit more material. Give it a second to uh, slice. And so it's eight minutes longer, and it takes 13 grams of filament. Remember, your roll is a kilogram, so that's 1,000 grams, just to give you an idea. And so now it's a lot more filled in. It's 30% in fill. Now, the reason why this print is so such a good print is it allows you to test a lot of things. So like that first layer has an empty text spot. That second layer doesn't. And so you should, on the bottom of the boat when it's done printing, if it's doing a good job, you should be able to read these letters. There's letters on the back as well. You should be able to read these letters. And so all of these things are testable, right? It should be smooth as it goes up. If it's not smooth, you know there's a problem with your printer settings. If this hole is not very straight, or if this hole is not very good, you'll notice as it goes up, it fills in these gaps and it creates a circle. Whenever you have the top of an arc, the printer will actually fill in that gap for you without any supports. We'll talk about what supports are in a second if you're not sure. Um, and so it, it just it's a good way to test like, okay, you see how that printer is going to print this overhang. And so how are your overhangs? These are all just good things to test. 
And so it's a print that doesn't take that long that just test a lot of parts of your printer. That's why I love it so much. And so you can see it's a save to removable drive. I can also just save it to my computer in my downloads. This is just going to save this G code, which I would input into my computer. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. If I do save it to my removable drive, you'll notice something. Cura will actually allow you to eject it to keep it safe as soon as you're done slicing, which is really nice. But that's it. That's, that's how you do a Benchy. All I would do now is save it to my drive, plug it into my printer, and hit print. I want you all to notice the name. I always delete the first part of the name. Always. Because if the name is too long, the printer won't actually see it. I found out, and that drove me crazy. Because I'd look at the file, and all the other files on my, uh, on my thumb drive worked, except this one. And I, I couldn't, it took me probably two hours before I found the answer and read it. Um, the printer, it was just, it was, the text was like three times as long as this. It was just a long named file. And I had to change the name, and then it showed up in my printer just fine. So I always get that first part. What is the first part? It's just the name of your printer. In this case, it's the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. So here's a shakily recorded demonstration of how to take a sliced G-code file from Cura, save it to your SD card, and print it on your printer. You can see that I'm working with a different file in this example, a print-in-place articulating dragon, but it does work the exact same. Now, notice that currently Cura says save to disk and not save to removable drive. This is because I have not inserted my USB with the SD card for the printer. Saving it to the disk just means save it to your computer but we want it on our SD card. So insert your printer's SD card into the USB adapter and insert the USB adapter into your computer. Give it a second to recognize it, and we can minimize this, and now it should say save to removable drive. You always wanna take a second to make sure that the file is named correctly, but once you do, then you can click save to removable drive, and it will save the file to your SD card. But once it's saved, do not just remove your SD card. It is very important that you always hit eject before you take out the SD card. Cura allows you to do this as soon as you are done saving it. So make sure you hit eject. Once you hit eject, you can safely remove the SD card, then take it over to your printer and insert the SD card without the USB adapter into the printer. Now, if you go to print on your printer, you should see the new file as an option. Select it and hit print. As an added bonus, if you are on an Elegoo printer and you have added the thumbnail download to Cura that I showed you in part one, you should see the print on your screen. And one last thing, it is always a good idea to have someone keeping an eye on the first couple of layers of your print. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button and please consider subscribing. And don't forget, this video was part of a series. So if you wanna keep going, go ahead and click continue learning or you can click the link to the full playlist down in the description.